call to worship. All around us, God is looking for those who will join us serving others. God is planting seeds of compassion in us, watching for them to bloom in our lives. In our midst, Jesus is walking among us, tending our hearts, watering us with grace. Jesus is trusting that our souls will grow big enough to welcome everyone. From morning to evening, the Spirit is at work, gently tending this garden called life. In us, the Spirit has found the perfect spot to bring forth lives of justice and peace. In this worship, we join with God to build hope in our lives and world. Prayer of Confession Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. The Declaration of Forgiveness Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 to 9 and verse 17. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. 
Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. This morning, our gospel lesson is found in Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 26, continuing through verse 34. Would you hear a word of hope for your life? Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome to worship at St. Andrew's Presbyterian in Victoria. We begin with prayer. Teaching God, quiet all the voices within our heads, hearts, and spirits 
Open our ears that we may receive your truth above the noise of the world and open us anew to how you work through the smallest, least likely things, even us, to advance your kingdom on earth. Amen. As some of you know, Linda and I have been looking for a new home. We weren't having any luck anxiously scouring the rental websites, and we were quite frustrated with our results. We were grateful for the suggestions many of you offered. From an unexpected conversation, we learned of a possibility available exactly when we needed it. A seed was planted and grew without any over-gardening on our part. What if we trusted God's working in our lives even when we aren't sure that is possible? What if we believe that successful growth has little to do with our maneuverings? I suspect that we might be amazed at what God can and will do without our input or direction. Suddenly the focus is not upon look at what we did, but instead look what God did. In Mark's gospel, we read two parables describing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is God's work within us and among us. Jesus' followers knew only the kingdom of Caesar, based upon power and control. Jesus was introducing another kind of kingdom, using something as simple and familiar as seeds. First, Jesus says the kingdom of God is, is, af, is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground. First, Jesus said, the seed would sprout and grow, but the sower doesn't know how that happened. We do have to scatter seeds, but what is produced is not up to us. We often feel like we're not doing enough or doing the right thing. The point is made in the first parable that the sower scattered the seed, went about his daily routine, and when the seed sprouted and grew, he was surprised at the results. The parable reminds us that the kingdom of God works in ways we often don't notice or expect. In the second parable, Jesus compares his kingdom to a mustard seed. The small seed seemed inconsequential, yet the plant could grow as tall as the house. That's the surprising thing, that something so small could grow into something unexpected and provide shelter for the birds. Our difficulty arises in confusing the ways of the kingdom with our ordinary way of doing things. The parables shatter the illusion that the fate of the kingdom is in our hands. For me, the challenge is to give up my anxiety over what if this happens or doesn't happen in my fretfulness, I wonder what more do I need to do? The parable says the results are not up to us. In the Corinthian passage, Paul reminds us that we live by faith, not by what we can see. Is that what the sower experienced when he sowed the seed and went about his daily business? Walter Brueggemann writes, when we walk by faith, we walk carefully, taking one step ahead because 
we cannot see ahead. The capacity of society to label, to dismiss, can be done quickly because we think we see everything at a glance. Walking by faith requires more attentiveness. We will come to value and be surprised by what might be growing that we cannot see. Does the small, insignificant mustard seed that surpasses all expectations illustrate this kind of faith? Brueggemann suggests that the tiny seed is like the dismissed and the devalued, those who seem not to matter. The mustard seed becomes God's new creation. God has reached out to us in our nothingness and made us new. The Corinthian passage ends with, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. This becomes our challenge, to see and value persons and circumstances differently. We are called to recognize that every person can be a new creation and a carrier of God's power for life. When the kingdom of God is within us, we are transformed. Frederick Beekner tells in his book, Listening to Your Life, about attending 12-step meetings. He writes, They also have slogans which you can either dismiss as hopelessly simplistic or cling on to like driftwood in a stormy sea. One of them is, Let go and let God which is so easy to say, and for people like me, far from easy to follow. Let go of the dark, which you wrap yourself in like a straight jacket, and let in the light. Stop trying to protect, to rescue, to judge, to manage the lives around you, your children's lives, the lives of your husband, your wife, your friends, because that is just what you are powerless to do. Remember that the lives of other people are not your business. They are their business. They are God's business because they all have God whether they use the word God or not. Even your own life is not your business. It is also God's business. Leave it to God. It is an astonishing thought. It can become a life-transforming thought. Scatter your seeds and watch what God will do without our over-gardening.
And now rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you God's peace, both now and always. Amen. Thank you.